Mwah! Well, good morning, guys. So it is kind of a cold, gray day. It's probably in the 50s. Heading up to the lodge to get some breakfast, some coffee, then back to camp, get our fishing gear, head out on the lake. All right. Have fun, boys. Look at this. That is the first fish of the day. Look at that little thing. <laughs> He's kind of cute. All right, Boris. I'm a provider. <laughs> <laughs> you provide something, all right. Oh my God, that's a nice one. Nice one, Brenty. You put up a good fight, actually. Mr. Brad did good. So these guys are catching all the big fish. I'm catching little dinky fish. Still having a blast. Because he's a oh, dinky God, fish God. catcher. I'm a dinky fish he's catcher. It. All right, so we're on <clears throat> shore lunch here. We're gonna fillet the fish. We get the good parts of the fish, but none of the fish goes to waste. The guts go to the pelicans. So there are two species of turtles up here in this part of Canada, two species of snakes, and no species of lizards are native to this area of Canada. This is a common garter snake that was on this island just as we're having shore lunch here. They get big up here. But this common garter snake and the red belly snake are the two snake species that exist in this part of Canada. The other side of Ontario, They've got Massasauga rattlesnakes, eastern hognose snakes, but here on this side of Ontario, we have two species, the garter snake and the red belly snake. To be honest, I've never found the red belly snake up here, but these garters, these garters are pretty common. You come up here to catch fish, wind up catching snakes. Total bonus. Look at that, you even bring champagne right to us. Look at that, they even brought us a shrimp tray. Champagne toast. Cheers. 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 Sammy and Nikki here. The Walmart who have contributed their... Here's the bringing up nothing next year. Yeah. 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 So that is the end of two and a half days of fishing here. We are on this island and we're gonna fry up the fish, have a little shore lunch, and I'm gonna go explore this island and see what kind of critters and flora and fauna are around because that's one of the things that I love doing when we beach the boats on a place like this where, you know, not a lot of people come. And uh, I just love going around and exploring this habitat. This is called a boreal forest. And it's kind of cool. I'm getting a little cold, I think. I'm getting kind of boogery.
yesterday at shore lunch I caught a garter snake and it got me to thinking about the relationship that certain animals in this ecosystem have. So the other species of snake found in this area is the red belly snake. It's a snake about 12 inches long. It's this country's smallest species of snake and it's one of the smaller species in the world. The relationship between that snake and the moose, which is the world's largest deer species, is kind of incredible if my theory is correct. There's an epidemic here called brainworm, and what that is is it's a parasite in the white-tailed deer habit. They're somehow immune to it, but the moose are not immune to it, and it is completely decimating wild populations of moose. In northwestern Minnesota, into Manitoba, that entire population of moose over the past 20 years has been almost completely eradicated because of the brainworm. And the way that the brain worm works is it literally is a worm that goes into the animal's brain and starts eating the brain. The animal goes crazy and then dies. It's terrible. So the white-tailed deer has this brain worm. They're immune to it. But when they take a dump in the woods, slugs come along, they crawl over the poop, they crawl up on the vegetation, the moose then inadvertently ingest the slug when they're eating the vegetation. That's how the brain worm gets contracted from the white-tailed deer into the moose. So what does the red belly snake eat almost exclusively? Slugs. So could it be that one of the world's smallest snake species has saved the world's largest deer species simply by inadvertently eating these infected slugs in this area? That is a master's or a doctoral thesis just waiting to happen. And I hope somebody picks up that baton and runs with it because I'd really like to know if I'm right. And if that is in fact the case, it's just one more way that the natural world works by having relationships between plants and animals and between animals and other animals. It's the intricacies of how the relationships in nature actually work. And once you understand this relationship, you can better understand nature. All right, guys, our final shore lunch for the trip is over. Once again, I have eaten too much. We all have, but now it's a 25 minute boat ride back to the cabin where, ooh, I got some sun. Anyway, I've got about 20 minutes to pack all of this up and take a shower where I then have to load up all my gear, get it on the camper, and it's an eight hour drive back down to Minnesota. But guys, I'll tell you, this weekend is one of the greatest weekends of the year for me. And it's a trip that I look forward to from this day until we come up here again in 362 days from now. And I think the thing that makes it the most fun is the family that I come up here with. My brothers and my cousins, what a great group of guys. and. If I came up here with anybody else, sure it would be fun, but it wouldn't be as fun. So my family is what makes this trip awesome. So anyway guys, I got family coming up from Phoenix, so I'm gonna show them all over Minnesota. I will take you guys with me, and until then, love the planet, keep your life in balance, and rattle on.